Namaste. How's it going? I find postures where we lie down on the bellies or the prone ones relaxing. They have a way of releasing tension in the spine and the hips, and they calm the brain. And I would normally start my practice that way, on my belly and rubbing through the shoulders, do some circular ones before I transition to traditional techniques. So for today, I'd like to share with you that drill I do. So if you can practice this sequence, you know, aside from your mat, you know, add a little bit more cushioning for your body since we will be rolling and rubbing through our joints so they remain light. Maybe just folded blanket. This is just my folded blanket. I just you know, <laughs> make them in a way that it you know, you know, adds a little bit more of that cushioning. Okay, now on the belly, in the position of the Advasana. All right, so you can rest the forehead down the ground and the arms relax around your side. All right. So I will be turning the head so I can keep yeah, instructing you. And my microphone doesn't get in the way of my voice. Good, and then here just relax, yeah. If the head is yeah, heavy on yeah, the center, you might periodically yeah, change and turn over one shoulder. Yeah, like this. And then just breathe. Yeah? Hmm. Each time you inhale, feel the pressure of the breath. Yeah. Opens the lungs, the back of the shoulders, and all the way down to your abdomen and the hips. And as you exhale, like your body weight pours, like you become twice as heavy. Yeah, like you're melting to the ground, like the muscles separate from the bones. And you may allow that gentle sigh of tension to exit through your lips. <sighs> through the nose, inhale, exhale. After that, nose exhalation. Releasing tension further through a light simhasa. Good. Good. All right, so remain relaxed. We're going to transition our arms forward so we can use the forearms or the arms to cushion the head and then folding the knees. And then let your knees circle around. Good. And then to breathe this one. Yeah. As your knees circle towards you, inhale. And as they move away, exhale. You might even let them go like you're swinging and falling. Tracing bigger circles as the joints of the knees start to open up. Good. You can turn the head to the side and then stop at one point and circle the opposite direction. Okay. Then after the circling, just yeah, waving your legs from side to side. Your foot may touch the floor in the middle, or you may find them like they crossing as they fall, and around in circles again. Yeah. Love this flow. Okay, and then side to side again. Okay, now we're gonna stretch the shoulders, all right? So that folded blanket, fold it another half, yeah. And we're going to allow that shoulder, you know, either shoulder, yeah, to fall over the edge. Okay, so let me I go so you can see clearly the form, yeah? Good. Okay. So the shoulder down, but the rest of your chest remain elevated with that cushion. All right, with that hand open, we're going to press with the spare hand and flip over that shoulder. And what the cushion does, it gives more height and space, so you can rub in and out of the shoulder. Yeah. 
Yeah, so uh, this is already like adding chest stretch, shoulder stretch into your practice. And at the same time, you yeah, twisting the spine around already. Okay. And then you can just settle for a breath or two with the heat falling. Good. And then from there, turn the heat away from the floor. Yeah, you may trace that yeah, circular motion with the heat falling and lifting, nodding and shaking. Okay, and after that next breath, return to the middle. Okay, and we're just changing shoulder. All right, shoulder down, chest remains cushioned. You can lift the legs there, you can lift the hips. Uh, yeah, if this is difficult, just one leg, yeah? Okay. You may rub in and out of the shoulder. It feels good, this one. Especially after your day of like working yeah, on the computer. I've, I did my admin today. And I didn't realize I was like working already for like from nine up to five p.m. Um, non-stop, yeah. And then back to the center because Wednesdays are um, admin days, and that's the only yeah day I can do to catch up with my paperwork, yeah, marketing, business side of. Yeah, that's cool. And then rubbing in and out. Good. And then one more change to the other but opposite shoulder. Okay. Okay, beautiful. And then back to the chest. All right, so you can keep that fold, folded blanket there. And then just move around in circles. And then right away you can feel and the sense of lightness in the low back already. Yeah, like it's a form of extension. Yeah. Okay, now when the hips are ready, you can start to lift one hip and allow that foot to touch to the back. Well, you can turn the head and the shoulders. So it's not too heavy for your neck. Yeah. Now this is like twist already. Yeah. Okay, all right, and then from there, you can let the head fall to the side and then back to your Advasana or yeah, the reverse corpse. All right, just one more thing. If you're rolling the head to the side, just lightly tuck the chin closer to your collarbone and that it prevents your neck from over twisting, okay? My microphone is getting in the way, so I'll just turn my head the other side. Yeah. Yeah, feel free to do so as well. In here, you can allow your face to touch the floor you know, with your chest cushioned you know, with that blanket. And breathe. Maybe between one and three minutes, yeah, before you seemingly flow and rub the joints. But the idea is to remain relaxed facing the earth. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. And then crossing again forward and circle around. This time, let's try to move the circle bigger yeah, and the range of motion faster. Okay. And then you can combine now, lifting and twisting and circling around, or reversing and side to side the hips fall. You can even crisscross those legs. Okay, and then from there, yeah, we're gonna rub the shoulders again. This time, not too long, maybe one or two breaths aside, and then down, and then change. Okay, so you can even, yeah, flow this, yeah, one breath at a time. Yeah. All right, and after that, next, return to the middle. <laughs> Okay, now this time we're just crossing our shins, crossing our ankles. 
if it's your nature with your legs falling out to the side, that's fine. Yeah. Mine always falls to the left. Oh, to, your, to my right side. Yeah, left on your angle because it's the camera facing angle. No knees. Good. And of course, it's wise to balance. You can allow them to fall to the other side. Or maybe towards the center as well. Yeah. But for me, it's not perfectly center. Every time I attempt to do the center, my lower back compensates so somehow. Yeah. I'm angling to the side, which is lighter for me. Beautiful. All right. Good. Hands beside the chest now, and the forehead relax on the ground. And you can rub the shoulders around like this. Beautiful. Okay. And then we're just going to lightly push away. Yeah, like your upward facing dog, but not too strict upper dog. Like you keep rubbing and rolling. And then that blanket, yeah, can help you create more, I say, mobility. Yeah, because you're using the smooth surface of the blanket in on rubbing forward and upwards. All right, good. And then we'll just break the cycle by doing kneeling. So knees on the ground, and extend your hips backwards as your spine grows forward. Okay, my chest. All right, and then let the head touch the ground. Okay, oh. this is also another form of like, prone, not really prone, but the head is facing the floor, yeah, and then this has a way of releasing tension in the occipital part of the brain, that's why balasana and forward bends, they have a way of relaxing the mind, calming the nervous system, and then releases tension, yeah, of the optic muscles, and the back of the brain. Okay, but I will progress this to an inversion, and normally I would do this as well. Yeah, so if you're just starting with your practice, just a simple downward facing dog, and then alternate the legs. Yeah, maybe after like three or four per leg, you go back to your knees and do your child's pose. All right, let's do that actually. Huh? You can lift, and then drop, and change. Okay, you can adjust the hand to your shoulders are open already after rolling through them. Good, and then easy, much in place. All right, so you can repeat the child's pose and then stay for another minute and do those alternate leg lift again. Yeah, but if you are able, yeah, you might try and progress this too. That's your sasana. Okay, now let me just get this microphone wire out of my face. Okay. Good. If you're doing the shirsasana, all right, walking your feet forward and then just placing that head lightly down so you're not pressing to the head, rather clear the shoulders off the ground and then your arm bones move towards the hips as you lift your legs upwards. Okay. Good. And then you may reposition your arms and shoulders in the neck. All right, shoulders towards your, your front side, away from the buttocks. And then clear the shoulders off yeah, by pushing away so you're not putting the weight onto your head. Mostly upper back strength here, so you can breathe. Also, that cushion yeah, adds comfort for your elbows, for your shoulders, and it makes the technique lighter. Yeah, can we do a couple more breaths? Mm. 
There are inversions, yeah. We drain the lymphatic system and bring the energy from the peripheries to the brain. All right, one more breath. All right, and then coming down with care and control and lightly touch the ground. All right, inhaling and exhale, rest. You can let your arms yeah, extend behind you to decompress the shoulders. Yeah. You can rub your shoulders around in circles and breathe. Beautiful. All right, and then from there, hands reach forward. Good. Just sit to the floor. Good. And then from there, hands support you, and we're gonna roll on our backs. Yeah. So just to change the flow of the energy. All right, and then from there, allow your legs to fan side to side, and your hips to twist from side to side. If the head is heavy from the head stand or yeah, the child's pose, you can cross the arms behind the head for a additional cushion or elevation. Or you can just allow them to open wide across. So keep going. Yeah. And then to breathe this one, inhale them up. Exhale and twist. Inhale, exhale and change until such time that the legs can go freely, so one leg opens before the other one falls up and down. Okay, you can also try this technique of the knee swinging up. Mm, feels good, this one. Also one of my favorite transitions. Okay. okay. And after that next side, yeah, just come back center, crossing your legs at the shins and then gently move to a rocking motion, up and down, up and down. All right, good. Head down, leg closest to me, relaxes forward, and then the other knee crosses. Good, you might reposition your hips like you wanna stack them first before you open the spare arm wide across. So you're doing a universal lying down twist. And then the head turn towards that free arm. You can allow your eyes to close here. Breathing mindfully, inhaling, exhaling. Mindful breathing is important, especially when you're holding the asana longer, yeah, as well as where you focus. Yeah, in here you can let your eyes relax and like you're magnetizing your forehead using the optic muscles. All right, so keeping this knee bent and just turn over. So just like you're flipping on your belly again. So we're back on the prone, okay? But this time, one knee is bent to the side. Okay, and then the other leg, yeah, circles, yeah? And that arm can adjust to the shoulder. Good, good. And circling, moving side to side, okay? What I also do here is I will have that blanket again to height and I will allow that knee to fall over the bottom edge of the blanket. So I have this clearance and what it does, it allows the knee and the joint surrounding the knee yeah, to open more as I circle that leg around. Yeah. Yeah. Freeing the heaviness. Yeah. Okay. But if this um, elevation, your knee doesn't like it, you can just go maybe not too high. Just make sure there's clearance for your knee to hang over yeah, the edge. So your knee is not <coughs> rubbing down the floor. But you can actually do that. Yeah, but I find with that additional space, yeah, 
more clearing and decompressing for not just the knee, for the hip, yeah, and that lower back too. Okay, you can just stay with your knee bent or that opposite hand grabs hold of the foot. You can rub the foot and the toes and the ankle. You can even go flat with the opposite hip as well. If the head feels heavy looking that direction, you may change to. You can place the forehead down the ground. Hmm. Actually, with the forehead down, yeah, it's coming. Sit right up. All right, and just rubbing that foot away. Good. And then from there, both knees now hang over that space. I'll try and make it higher if you like this space. Suits me lighter. The belt and we're head the other way. You see, the knees are free. Yeah. You can enjoy the mobility of your hips too. You're moving around in circles and then side to side. You can also feel the decompression of the low back, this one, like you're doing a gentle extension. Good. But more organic, yeah. more through mobility, like you're turning and coiling through the linings, like gears inside the body. You can kick and then fall up and then down. Okay. You can now combine as well this. Yeah, so we're just back. We're just redoing the elements over and over again. But hopefully you're experiencing deeper sensations. Yeah, to the point that you can kneel both sides already and reach for the bind. All right, and come back to the chest. Good. And change, yeah. If holding the posture yeah, longer yeah, strains the shoulder, you can just go and rub from side to side. Yeah? Beautiful. All right. And then release. Yeah, circle again. As before. Okay, you can cross and then stay there for a few rounds. Mindful breathing. You can rub the tongue around the mouth and then changing sides. You can change legs as well. Beautiful. Okay. Release. Okay, now press. And roll that blanket. Okay, and open up. Good. What I also do, yeah, sometimes is I will let yeah, my toes and then my ankle yeah, rub over that height, see? And then that I could use that additional space and coiling in and out, not just yeah, and through the joints of the feet, but also by creating more space so I can lift yeah, longer and more open in the extension. All right, and from there, yeah, transitioning to kneeling. So if you notice, it's just the same. We're just going deeper and deeper. And hips to the back and the spine to the front. Okay, easy. You may stay one or two breaths with the arms extending forwards. And then a few more behind you. All right. Let's do alternate three-legged dog. Yeah. You can just find the grit of your mat again. Lifting one leg. And the other one, up and down, up and down. Uh, you can rub like this, extending that hand too. 
And then the other one, you might be feeling your right hip is more open than the left. Because of that additional, yeah, yeah, flapping fish with practice. And then just settle. All right. And from there, yeah, we're going to do another inversion. All right. You can cross through and sit on the ground. Right now, that blanket again, you're going to fold it. So you have now this face because we're going to place our head flat on the mat with our shoulders enjoying the additional padding. Okay, good. So try this first if it's heavy. Yeah, I'll yeah, teach you some modifications. All right, if for example, doing this and you feel, oh, it's still yeah, low, you can refold your blanket so it's higher. All right. What's important is that, yeah, there's this, yeah, um, enough cushion for most of your shoulder blades to relax, yeah, because if you're too narrow, yeah, that could strain the neck, yeah, and if you're too high, that also could strain the neck. So for me, I think this is ideal, and this, like, wide padding as well. So the whole of my shoulders are down there, and then the head, and there's this healthy gap between, yeah, the back of the neck, the back of the head, as well as the shoulders. Okay, now, you can start with this first, yeah? As always, this one, side to side, and then you can swing the leg higher now. You can also reach over the head, and then that spare hand grabs hold of the foot, and rubbing the tongue around. Yeah, so this is now the mudra part, not energy, or channeling our energy to the higher brain centers, okay? You can use the hand to rub in and out of the hip joint. And then this now where I utilize my tongue. Okay. And then opening one leg out to the side and reaching over. Yeah, if this is heavy, always, you have the choice to use a strap, yeah. A strap could be what, your belt, could be a towel, yeah. <laughs> Something to support you while you build your openness and flexibility. Okay. Uh, there's another one transition that I always do. Okay, feels good for the hips like your um, Supta Padangustasana but you are employing and utilizing yeah, the prop as your additional support. And in here, we're also adding some hip mobility yeah, component. Oh, I love this one. Yes, especially after sitting for like many hours. Yeah, the hip flexor tend to tighten. Not only that, because you're thinking, you're planning. All right. In your writing, if you're thinking your body tightens because you are pulling your energy towards the brain. All right, very open now, okay? You can do a few of this, up and down, up and down. All right, so that will allow you to assess yeah, the question. Yeah. I think I need a little bit more of that wide support under me. That's it. All right. That's better. Yeah, so the back is fully supported. Okay. Now, option one. Yeah, you can just lift the legs like this. Yeah. And then just stay here. Or you can what? Yeah. Another alternative. Yeah. When you do your home practice, you don't have to, well, if you, well, yoga props are quite affordable. You don't have to have the flash ones. Or you can, what, use pillow, yeah, stack of books, or you can just even improvise like a timber, yeah, to serve as your prop. Okay, option one is right here. Again, the head, yeah, see, the head is resting, and there's this, 
Um, let me just adjust my props so you can clearly see the alignment. Yeah, head down, back of the neck long, shoulders supported, and then you can just adjust your prop. Yeah, so you're not rubbing the bony part or the sensitive part of your hips. Yeah, you're placing that your block yeah, down the flat bones at the hips. Okay, and here probably you can just stay or second level, yeah, with your knees bent and your feet are hanging loose. Oh, feels good, this one. All right. If you feel like the need to circle around, you can do that. Or you can lift your legs up yeah, and adjusting maybe forward or backwards and then moving your hands towards yeah, the opposite end. So you have the healthy gap between your shoulder, the neck and the ears. You can rub around the circles. All right, so like a version of the what? Viparita Karani. Or, yeah, you can yeah, practice the Viparita Karani yeah, if you're able. Yeah. You can, yeah. Reach over first, we can reposition, you know, clearing. Yeah, this is how I do it. I will press up here so I can clear my spine off my shoulders. Again, when you're doing that, don't turn the head, yeah? I'm turning the head so I can, <laughs> that's my nature as a teacher, I keep looking. Okay, now you can you know, energize the core and then lift or I keep adjusting. And the Viparita Karani, you're not perfectly stacked. It's not like the shoulder stand that you are forming a long line. In the Viparita, you're like angled to about 45 degrees. Good. And here, you can allow the head to relax with that space supporting your neck. This is quite manageable. Yeah, even if you are transitioning from a beginner's practice to your intermediate asana program. All right, you can allow your eyes yeah, to alternate between closing and lightly opening, like a hypnotic experience. Okay, breathe through it. All right, and then from there, yeah, you can roll your hips further up and back towards <laughs> your face. Yeah, but you're not rounding the back. Okay, and sometimes I would do this too, you know, to stretch the shoulder in yeah, the position of the halasana. And with that blanket under your shoulders, there's no pressure in the neck and your brain. Okay. All right. Okay. And then from there, you're know, rolling back. You can lift the head as you roll to the ground. All right. And release. Beautiful. All right. You can turn the side to side. Yeah. Rubbing the tongue around the mouth. Yeah. Okay. Crossing, swinging up and down. Good. And then you may already yeah, allow that blanket to go wide and flat again. Yeah. yeah. Keep moving. All right. And you can do this too as a way of releasing tension in the lateral side after that inversion. And the other one. Beautiful. Okay. Almost finished. Leg closest to me, relaxes forward. And then the other knee crossing on top. Yes. <laughs> you might have thought I've forgotten this now. Yeah. That's how I practice. Um, I'm not very like symmetrical. Yeah. Or very lateral that I just change from one position to the next. You know, changing from one side to the next. In between I flow, yeah, because that's how I feel the energy move inside. Yeah. <laughs> it crawls in and out like gears, and I just follow yeah, that natural yeah, 
movement of the, of the breath, of the energy, of the joints, and even our minds. And because our energetic anatomy, although they are made up of like three major ones, right, left, and center, yeah, in between their intersections, and that's my inspiration. Yeah? All right, now right, keeping this leg bent, and then just flip over on your tummy again, and it's the position again of the flipping fish. Okay, so you can do that elevation again, so the heat can rest and bend that leg and circle around. Okay. And you can lightly swim that foot around. Okay, keep going. I'll try to add for space for my knee. Because after this lesson, I will be progressing to my deeper ones and the back knee, and the hip openness. Same, same, same. <laughs> Those the techniques I share with you in our guided lessons. But this one, we've not tackled intensively. So this is like actually a workshop of the sequence. <laughs> All right, and you can rub that side longer with the hand. Now you can also move this side longer, coiling in and out like the caterpillar crawling. Okay, you can rub in and out of that hip and settle. Hmm. Okay, let me try the forehead too. Good, and release the leg. Okay, our knees hang over the edge, over the end for more freedom and our knees. Good. So our practice today, yeah, you don't have to acquire those props. Yeah, well, my props are quite affordable, yeah. But blanket, yeah, strap, belts, necktie, the service your block, your books, timber, yeah. You can even do what? Um, pillows, yeah. But I prefer the sturdy ones. Because yoga blocks, yeah, it's a good investment because you can use that while, well, for example, in supporting you, yeah, as I've um, showed you the halasana, the uh, viparita karani, and also when you're learning your transitions to the downward dog, to your forward jump, yeah, yeah, many things. Okay, and then from there, yeah, shifting forward and curling upwards. Okay, and glide it through. Okay, and do your downward dog. Okay, easy marching dog, lifting to alternate. Okay, and also, yeah, if you are choosing your blanket, yeah, make sure it's not, it's not slippery. So these are like, yeah, threaded ones. Yeah, <laughs> I found, um, um, well, one of the shops here, and it's suited for like grip. Yeah, so it's like a mat actually. Yeah. Up, and then just march in place. Bend and stretch, and a few side to side as well. Right. And let's finish the session with back bends. Okay. Probably your body is so loose now. You can do a strasana or again. Well, box can support you in aiding and in giving you additional height, whether medium or the high. Okay? Good. Or you can do it flat on your feet. Yeah, I'll show you both. Yeah, breathing in. And I've given so many tutorials on this position, you know, strasana. Just feel free to study them 
yeah, for more <laughs> intensive learning. Yeah. But at this stage of my practice, yeah, using the block in the Ustrasana is actually restricting my movement. So what I'll do is I'll just do it freely. Yeah. All right. Good. You can move in and out of the shoulder. Then you can rub forward and side to side and settle for a few more breaths. All right, come up and walk your knees in place. And you can rub from side to side. Awesome. Good. Yeah. Downward dog. Yeah. <coughs> and alternate your downward facing dog. All right. Nice and complete practice. Good. Many alternatives yeah, to suit your needs your purpose, your level, <laughs> how you feel for the day, and then I will just flow once here. All right, and come back to the floor, and then you can kneel, cross, and sit. Or, well, then this is one, again, another you know, benefit of having the yoga block. If your program for the day is about strength and then building your power, you can do that too. Yeah, so good investment. Yeah, and they are affordable. You can find 